I am having these conversations because it's important to me that we talk to people with knowledge about what we can do now. Uh, and so I am uh, going to be just talking those things through. But I wanted to explain to you what I'm not going to be talking about because I have seen uh, some things from mayor's offices and I have seen some things from church leadership and I've seen some things from chiefs of police and it is oh shock and awe and outrage and how could this happen in response to the live footage of the public execution of Mr. George Floyd uh, and what I'm not going to be doing in these conversations is dissecting the state of racism in America and holding the hands of white people who have refused to see the state of racism in America and explain it to them. And if it took a live execution with an undeniable responsibility on the part of the police department for some people to understand, oh, there really is a police misconduct issue and oh, it really is related to race and race relations in America and oh, black people really are more at risk than others. You know what? Here's what I think. The same way you would not require Hand, held, hand holding and recitation of injury by a victim of sexual assault because you would understand that that re-traumatizes them the same way that you would not require someone who comes from the era of the traumatization of Jews in this country the same way you would not require a traumatization of a child who has watched domestic violence in their home because you would understand that bringing them in as the responsible parties for getting you up to speed is asking them to be re-injured. I need for you to stop requiring that of us. I need for you to understand that if you still don't have an understanding 400 years in and gone through slavery and gone through Jim Crow and gone through desegregation and gone through, you know, just race related decisions and hiring and firing, employment discrimination, poverty, uh, health matters where we can't get what everybody else does, redlining in terms of property ownership, banking cir circumstance. Listen, and this is why, see, because I'm, I'm, I'm worked up now. I, I want to cry now. And it's not that I don't want to explain it to you, my brothers, my sisters, Mr. Mayor, State Representative, Dr. Pastor. I do. I want you to understand these things. I love you. My my parents love you. My grandparents loved you. We're we're faith led people. We really are, uh, and we're law abiding people, and we're voting people. Check the numbers on us. But we have been hollering about these things. I can't count the number of of panels I've moderated for the past twenty years trying to say that we are being disproportionately affected across the board and especially in the area of police misconduct. I, I, you know, it can't just be that a Martin Luther King holiday comes around and you import one of us to come and give you a good talking to. No, it can't be that Black History Month comes around and you invite one of us at your church and they're there. And then the latest thing that we're getting is you're saying, you're able to learn. You want to learn. You're open to hearing. So now we got to get learning sessions where you cart in some smart black person to hold your hand and to protect you from the masses who are calling you on your stuff because we've been trying to talk to you. We've been trying to explain it. We've been bleeding 
in front of you, not just metaphorically, literally. I am outside today because I want some air. That's why I'm out here. Because we, because we can't breathe. So there are people you can call. Dear Christian leader, call Jim Wallace. He's been running Sojourner Truth magazine, you know, Sojourner's magazine all these years. He understands the state of race in, in America. He's writing about it. He has scholarship about it. He brings in smart people to talk about it. And he's talking about it because he doesn't have to worry about going out on the street. He doesn't have to worry about his spouse or his child or his parent dying at the hands of law enforcement, just trying to breathe, trying to get some, some milk. Talk to Jim. Talk to Jane Elliott. She understands race. She understands how race is a social construct that was started as as something that was expedient for the government and how really there's no black, there's no white race, there's just human race. Jane can explain all that. And she don't have to worry about her grandchild getting stopped, just trying to get from the 7-Eleven to the Kmart. She, she can talk to y'all. She really can. I mean, come on out there, psychologists and psychiatrists and and pastors and preachers and mayors and senators and chiefs of police. I am over you claiming feigned ignorance about these things. You are not ignorant. You choose to not know. And I am not going to offer you protection when what you are supposed to be doing is protecting us. If you are a leader in any shape or fashion, you should be offering me, my children, my brothers and sisters, the protection. You owe the apology. You, come on, repent, which means to turn, change your ways. So, no. We're not going to be breaking down the, oh, it really is racism for y'all today. That's not what these conversations are going to be about. I have had those conversations and I'm full up. And, and really, you shouldn't want to traumatize any of my brothers and sisters with that conversation. Because when we watch Mr. Floyd die, it's not just we have a humanity pull. That's my daddy. That's my brother. That's my husband. That's my son on the ground while my sisters and brothers are screaming, get off of his neck. There is a guttural emotional reaction there. It is it is real for us. And I am incensed. I am pissed off. I am hurt past crying so no, y'all, come on, come on board. You ready to come on board? It takes um, seeing just us executed in the streets in an undeniable fashion where a man is handcuffed. I read something where a leader who I respect, and I won't say their name because my goal is not to embarrass you. That's not my goal. But, but when I read you saying up till now, when you saw instances like this happen, you stayed out of it. You wanted to hear all of the facts. You were waiting for the complete story. Well, how many times did you need to, to see all those facts? Because I've been, I've been out here bleeding for you. While I support you, while I support your run for office, while I support your ministry, while I come and show up at your events, while I'm at the conferences, while I'm at the conclaves, all of it. We are out here looking at you fail us. And now we're going to have listening sessions? No, we're not. Not on my watch. That won't happen here. Not in this space. No. Get your folks together and y'all figure this thing out. And you lead. You start with an apology for the decades that you failed us. Start there. While you've been claiming to be a civil rights leader, while you claim to be pro-life except for my baby's lives, while you claim to preach Christ, don't come for me with that. 
I'm ordained and I know the book. You have to seek justice. That's just straight Bible. So no. I'm not going to tell my brothers and sisters to not speak plainly to you about the measure of our offense at your inaction and your apathy and your disinterest and your denial. No, I won't. You get what you get. And you should want that, leader. You should want that concerned citizen at large. Feel us. And do better. And get with some of your folks who have been doing better. And bring them in to explain it. Don't ask me to come in so that I'm like your co-signer and your validator. You shall be without validation in this season. 53% of y'all, my sisters, you voted this man in who has unleashed terror on our people. Black and brown. I'm not exempting you. It's between you and God. That's, that's, that's your stuff. And I'm not holding your hand. No, I won't. And I'm glad that I'm doing this live because then I can't even take it back. Because this is where it is. Okay. Is the press conference on, y'all? Somebody tell me. Because I need to get off of here. So I'll be back. I'll be back with uh, Attorney Ben Crump in a little bit. And then I will be back uh, talking to Jeray McKesson. Then I'll be back a little later, hopefully talking to uh, Tamika Mallory and whoever else I can engage to have conversations that are forward moving, that are righteous, okay? And that give us action steps that we can do as a people to, to take care of ourselves, to heal our land, okay? To seek his face, yes, in this season. I love y'all.